adjusting my mic. I can hear myself here. Um, visitors, if you're here for the first time or the first time in a long time, just show us your hand and forgive us for our craziness this morning. That is how we worship here. <laughs> eh? Okay, it's all family here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I have a couple of little things quickly before I start my message today. First of all, last Sunday I spoke about the seed, if you remember that. I was really instructed by God to talk about the seed. Uh, we don't collect, we don't ask people to give a seed just because it pleases us. Sometimes the word is clear. It says even the amount to give for the seed. In this situation, it was what God tells you to give. So you, we have preached on the seed. You understand what the seed is. So I would like to thank everyone who actually uh, gave a seed for the family, for the business, for whatever you gave the seed for. Um, we are very pleased about that. If God is still talking to you, uh, the seed is not for me, it's for Apostle. Ask for his uh, email address, do an e-transfer, do what God instructed you to do. Amen. 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 You have to understand that um, Apostle has been a, a great man in our life. Yeah. Some of our kids grew up with all us, all us together, learning from our mistakes, but having a person who was always there for us. Right. When there is fire, he comes like a firefighter, you know, always. There is problem in marriages, you will see him. Kids, you will see him everywhere at school. So it's an honor to be able to do that. Hallelujah. Right. Apostle has launched a website. Uh, the address is www.elhajdialo.com. Simple, his name.com. Um, the purpose is to be able to um, be able to sell his material and stuff like that. I encourage everyone to go there uh, on your cell phone or whatever you have and then visit the website. It's simple. Um, it gives you the opportunity to uh, buy books and also to donate, donate to the ministry. I checked the website, I checked the donation part. It works perfectly. Uh, you just need a credit card, and they, there we go. We always buy books. We we'll buy CDs, some buy movies, and whatever you want. This is an opportunity to buy from a person from the house. We do have people here, best sellers here, sitting here. Some of you don't know. This is an opportunity to be able to buy books from people who have impacted our life positively. Amen. Books are not expensive, $24.99. Uh, I recommend you buy them all. We have only three, so it's not even $100. Please do that. Before buying any book from Benny Hinn or other people, uh, thank you, God, for them. But we have our own books as well. Amen. Amen. I just want to thank you as well for uh, the congregation members who have been supporting uh, us uh, during the, all the, the transition when Apostle is mostly looking uh, after all the churches now. So thank you for all the leadership who have been there for us. Thank, thank you for the... <laughs> uh, I have switched, okay? <laughs> Amen. So focus here. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, since we have been in charge pretty much, uh, I have seen people helping in all ways. I mean all ways. Every day. That has touched my heart very much. And especially that my wife is visiting her family in the Middle East. Uh, man. <laughs> Really, you, you, you know true friends when you are in problems. I have seen people calling, calling my kids, bringing them for uh, ice cream, uh, walking with them, bringing food every single week. Uh, it's just amazing. Coming over, helping with cleaning. You can't just imagine that really did touch my heart. 
and I thank you so much, and I love you so much. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's only God who can reward you. Amen. On that note, um, I'm going to take a few weeks of vacation. Uh, I will be out of the country um, until beginning of September, somewhere there. And during that time, Apostle will be here. Um, take care of him the same way you do. Amen? Amen. And probably at that time, my wife will be here too. <laughs> she was due back already before uh, I leave. But she lost her passport. <laughs> so she's in the process of getting a new one. She, she found it, but it was already too late. It was already canceled and stuff. So hopefully she will be here before I come back. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Um, just keep in prayers all the congregation members who are on vacation too. Pray for them so that God really protects them. I mean, I pray for a shield around them, protect them physically, you know, protect them in all different ways. Amen? And protect their belongings and assets here. Hallelujah. Yes. Always pray for church members. We have many, many of them on vacation right now. Amen. Um, I think Pastor Neil has spoke about the part bless. Am I right? Uh, so I really encourage everyone to participate. This is family, so participate in family business. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So I'm glad that uh, you are here today to listen to this message. Amen. So the message today, I title my message, God has the final say. Hallelujah. And then, amen. amen. Everything we were singing today was pointing to that. God has the final say. Yes. I will try to be as fast as I can. Before I start, I got a dream a um, few days before, like three, four days. Usually when I dream, you know, a beautiful, wonderful dream, I don't want my dream to finish. And then I, I woke up, I go to the washroom. By the time I'm back, I don't remember what my dream was. Yes. It's gone. Uh, I always forget my dreams. But this one, no. This one, stay there. Amen. Absolutely, God was, God was talking to me. And then God was talking about the end of time. It is so strong, I see all the details of my dream until today, four days after. What happened was I was in my house and I heard people crying, yelling, and making noise outside. And I said, what's going on? And then people were saying, oh, this is the end of the world. I took a quick look outside. The, the entire the sky, everything was like breaking apart, falling down. Huge stones. When a stone falls down, he crushes everything. He buries everything underneath there. This was not rocks. I'm talking about stones. So if you're buried, no one can lift that stone. It's, it's a huge stone. Those are the things that I saw. Everything was dark. I mean, it was chaos. And people were running into houses to find cover. <laughs> and, and then I remember smiling, saying, okay, I prefer being outside so I can see the thing coming and then try to run. Because if you're in the house, you don't see anything, and then you will be buried in there. But I realized that there, there was no way you could hide. You could not control things that were falling from the sky. They were huge, big, and then it was like a storm. So I said to myself, in order to be in peace, let me stay in my house. So I stayed in the house too. I said, okay, if I have to die, then it's the end of the world, and then I'm gone. So I stayed there, and um, nothing happened. And then it was calm now outside, and then people were now trying to go check who was still alive. And, but it was really chaos outside. And um, so, 
I, at that time, I spoke to God, and then I said, okay. So if I understand, the rapture has happened, and this is actually the end. So I got mad. I, I, I told God, okay, so you, you, the rapture happened, and I'm not aware? <laughs> you know? Come How come? You know, I was expected something, a word, you know, something is happening. No, nothing. And then God was smiling. Don't ask me to describe him. I remember just the smile. So I said, okay, I, I just don't get it. Because I know I will be part of that rapture. So how come I'm still here and we're talking about the end? So God said, no, no, no. This is not the end. So I said, okay, is this the tribulations? What is it? He said, no, this is a continuation of tribulation that started from a long time ago. In the end, it will accelerate. But this is nothing. Really. So I said, okay. So what happened to these people who are dead? Be because people who are dead, we could not see them anymore. They were gone. That's the reason I, I said maybe that was the rapture. God said, no, 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 <laughs> it's not a rapture yet. These people were supposed to be dead, so I just, I just took them away. And then I will take some more away as well. So I said to him, okay, listen, I am sure that I'm living right. I am sure that I will be part of uh, the rapture. I am sure about that. Can I just live right now my eternal life and then we forget about everything else? He said, yes. Huh. So why do I have to do to start right now or to be sure that this is my eternal life? He said, you just have to ask. Oh, okay. There was a moment of hesitation. I was talking to God. So I said, okay. So what if I ask, and actually I was wrong, what happens to me? He said to me, I, I just take, away, I take you away right now, like the other people who are gone. Okay. I said, okay, listen, I have no doubt in my heart, so I would like to start my eternal life right there. So I was expecting like a poof, and then I disappear or something. Nothing happened. And then God said, there we go. And then he smiled again. So I said, hallelujah, this is good. So actually, this is eternal life, which means doesn't matter what is happening around me, I will continue. Even in the valley of the shadow of the death, I will walk victoriously, and nothing will touch me. I will step on serpents, they will probably do whatever they want to do, but nothing will happen to me. Yeah. So I can proclaim the word of, of God without any fear. God said, yes. Oh, my goodness. So when this rain of storms was coming down, because it came down again, I was going crazy, proclaiming like, like nothing was happening. And I told people, if you want to be sure that this is your eternal life, you just have to ask. So some people risked, and then we heard some poof, poof, poof. They, it was done for them. And then some other people were assured that was eternal life, and they were able to continue. Brothers and sisters, this is real. There will be a moment where God will separate people. You just have to make sure you're living right and choose the right side right now. Amen. Amen. So that was my dream. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. During my prayer, God reminded me about uh, the vision we have for the year 2018. It becomes like a passion for me. And God told me two things. He said, Pastor JB, you carry the vision of CPF. It is in you. Yes. I said, yes. And then he says, oh, hang on a second. I have anointed you for that vision.
Brothers and sisters, I am very serious. If we proclaim that 2018 is a year of grace revolution where we will see acceleration and multiplication, God has empowered me and empowered you as well. We carry that vision. He has anointed us to fulfill that vision. I have no doubt when I pray for a person, there will be acceleration, there will be multiplication. I am saying there will be acceleration and multiplication. At the end of the service, you may rush home if you want, but you can stick around for a prayer. Anything that you think is stagnating, walls that you are unable to bring down, make sure you come with me. We agree with God for an acceleration. A few weeks ago, I got a text message from an elder in the church saying, oh, this brother just lost his, his job. I can't believe it. Please, can you call him and, and, and pray for him? Okay, I did not call him, but we met at church, and then I took that opportunity to talk to him, to pray for him a little bit, and then I said, okay, brother, do not worry. Something better is coming. Do not worry. I got a text message yesterday from the brother saying, oh, I just got a phone call, and actually that was my interview, and I got hired. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, time is coming where you now go into the office with a tie and suit, and then respond to questions and go through testing and exams. Time is coming where people will call you. You think it's an interview, but it's just a confirmation of your work. Amen. Hallelujah. Acceleration. Acceleration. I know I'm talking to people who probably do not see any way out. You have seen around you people being blessed. You hear testimonies, but for you, nothing has happened. You are about to lose your hope because your eyes are fixed on other people. You heard this morning from Pastor Nilda, it's your eyes must be fixed on God. God and God alone, hallelujah. Amen. I always remind you, Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, that says, I know the plans and thoughts that I have for you, yeah. says the Lord. Plans for peace and well-being and not for disaster. To give you a future and hope. Brothers and sisters, God is saying again this morning, I'm in charge. Stay still, I'm in control, hallelujah. That is what God is telling us. If you have been waiting, things are not coming the way you want. Your prayer life is very poor. Your family situation is not that great. I have a good news for you. Jeremiah 29, 11. It is for you. God has fantastic plans for you. Turn your eyes toward him. Not looking at other people when they are blessed, you are not blessed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. God has instructed me to tell you this morning, where you are at is not your final destination. Amen. Things you're seeing right now, this is not the end of it. Hallelujah. Amen. So do not settle down there. I know some people here, your mom is your model. Whatever she was able to achieve, if you can come closer, you have made, um, I have a different news for you. Your mom is probably a moral, but she did not achieve ma uh, much. God has different plans for you. Your dad may have tried and maybe failed, but for you it will be different. You are in God's plan. Hallelujah. I know some people from generation to generation, they go through the same problems. Women don't get married. The men are drink alcohol and use drugs, and I mean, nothing is going around. If you are part of that family, today we're putting an end to that curse, hallelujah. An end to that curse. If you're here and listening to this message, it is for you. End to the curse, hallelujah. A new chapter is opening. A new chapter is opening. You may probably look like them, when they see you, it's an identical photocopy of your dad. Dad was drinking, I drink. You know? 
His failure, my failure. Today, I put an end to that. Uh -huh. Your future is your future. God has a plan for you. You are now coming. You, you, you only came through them. You came through your dad and your mom. Okay? But you're coming from God. Your DNA is God's DNA. Because the Bible says God knew you before you were born. God knew you before your dad and your mom knew each other. Hallelujah. He loved you. He named you. And then he started looking for people who could carry you. Hallelujah. If your dad did one, you will do a hundred. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, some people are getting this. Yes. Uh -huh. You have a unique destiny. Yes. Unique and protected. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Grace revolution is in operation in this church. Hallelujah. Yes. I know seven months has gone by and probably you do not see anything. You, you believe this revolution is for other people, not, not for me. Eh? I would like to travel. I can travel. Eh? Prophet Okema travels all the time. Don't look at him. Okay? God has a plan for him, and God has a plan for you. Amen. My brother gets a job. You don't get a job. Don't worry. Uh -huh. God has a plan for you. Don't worry for him. Uh, him, it's him. You, it's you. God cannot give you what he gives them because God has a purpose for you and he will equip you for your purpose. Amen. Not their purpose. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Grace revolution is at work. Last week I told you, it's not because you don't see anything or you don't hear anything that God is not at work. Or God is not suffering anymore. God is not strong anymore. That's not true. God is strong, God is still at work, God has a plan, and no one can take even a little part of that plan away from him. It is impossible. Amen. The book of Isaiah, chapter 40, verse 31, says in the Amplified Bible, For those who wait for the Lord, who expect, look for, and hope in him, they will gain a new strength, and they will renew their power. They will lift up their wings and rise up close to God like eagles, rising toward the sun. They will run and not become weary. They will walk and not grow tired. Hallelujah. I'm expecting to hear something. Uh, if you expect from the Lord, you will rise up on eagles' wings. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You will succeed and you will not fail. Hallelujah. I understand you, have, you may have some doubts because of the time you have been suffering. Maybe it's a disease. Maybe I don't know. Your situation may look permanent because of the length. And you may think there is no way. I'm here to tell you there is a way, and the way is Jesus. Yes. I proclaim that without any doubt. Do you accept it without any doubt? Hallelujah. There is only one way, and that way is Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Your disease may look terminal. I remember this brother who had uh, a cancer. <laughs> well, not once, but three times. So every time he had cancer, it was, oh, my goodness, okay. We just prayed. There is nothing else we did. And then the, after a few, few months and few years, the cancer was gone. And then the devil visited him again. And then we do the same again three times. Some other people may think, this is terminal. There is no way I can live. It's cancer. Well, report after report, they may look the same. And you may be wondering if God is able. I'm here to tell you God is able. Uh, you may be tired. Yes, God is able. You may be tired and thinking, how can I handle all this problem again? Guess what? You are not on your own. God is on your side. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The second book of King, chapter 17, verse 39 says, Brother, worship the Lord your God. It is who deliver you from the hand of your enemies. 
I understand you go to the hospital to get uh, some medication and stuff. God uses them to heal you. The person who heals you is God. Because some other people take the same very medication you're taking. Even in a higher dose, but they don't get well. It's God who is in control. God is in charge. Hallelujah. Do not uh, lose hope. Amen. There is no match for God. You can go around everywhere you want. I'm saying there is no match for God. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. You remember the story of the, the children of Israel. For 430 years, they were living in slavery. We're talking about many generations. Your dad, your granddad, behind there. All slaves. For them, there was no hope at all. They could not think or see any hope anywhere near. Unless in the books, because they kept their books. Hallelujah. One day in Exodus chapter 3, verse 7, God said, I have seen the affliction of my people. Let me tell you this morning, God is saying, I have seen your affliction too. Amen. God is saying this morning, I have heard your groaning. I have seen your poverty. I have seen your financial troubles. I have seen you, mother, the way your husband is treating you. I have seen your, your affliction. I have seen all of that. I have heard your cry concerning your kids and the future of your family. I have heard that. I know how much you have been suffering from the disease you have. But God is saying this morning, enough is enough. I have heard, I have seen your affliction, hallelujah. Whatever decision has been taken against you to keep you in poverty, to keep you in financial hardship, I cancel it in the name of Jesus. Amen. I nullify it. Zero. It does not exist again. Oh, hallelujah. That is how we, we fight against uh, darkness. We stand against it. We proclaim victory, and victory surely happens. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me say this morning, according to that word, you are free then. You are free from death. You are free from disease. Hallelujah. You are free from financial difficulties. Extreme hardship. You are free from that. Hallelujah. Those who are single, eternal single. You are free from your singleness. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. The Bible says the man should not live alone. So you are free from singleness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Ah, where are the singles? Hallelujah. You are free from that. Hallelujah. If you have an expectation, God this morning is saying, enough is enough. Enough is enough. God is saying your situation is just temporary. The children of Israel, for 400 years, they thought their situation was permanent. But when God says, I have heard your affliction, automatically they understood my situation was temporary. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. What you're going through today and thinking if to, what will bring tomorrow, if it will be the same thing, I'm here to tell you it's just temporary. Amen. It is temporary. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God says this morning, I have the final say. Mm -hmm. People may have cursed you May I have cursed your family. In this family, nothing good comes out of it. But brothers and sisters, the only person who has a final say is God and God alone. Amen. It's God and God alone. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Your situation, you think is help, helpless? No, no, no. God has a final say. There is no other way, hallelujah, to embrace grace revolution if in your mind you cannot stand and say, listen, nothing is going on. I cannot secure a good job. My kids are growing crazy. Hallelujah. If you are unable to say, this situation I'm going through is just temporary. God has a different plan for me. And that plan is coming. Whatever has been said against me has no effect for me. Because God has not said, said the last word yet. Once God says the last word, done. That situation of infertility, done. Kids will stop coming. 
Think about 2018. You will hear testimonies at the end of the year. You will be amazed of what, the things that God has been doing only this year in the church. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. We heard the testimony of Apostle Elijah for many years. This is a child who grew up without a proper father figure. Whoever was playing the role did not like him at all. At night, he will come already drunk, and he points to him. He was living with his, his, uh, his, I think his mother. He will kick the boy out, a child, out, close the door. What was the hope? Hmm? What was he doing? Eh? Brothers and sisters, God's plans are impenetrable. Absolutely. He was doing whatever he was doing, but he did not know God had a plan for him step by step by step. You may kick him out today, but the next step that God has planned will happen, hallelujah. It will happen. He was hoping he would die. He was hoping something would happen to him. But what he did not know, down the road, step one, he will be a member of the Victory Cornerstone Church. That dad over there had no clue about that. Second step, he will be a cleaner in the church, faithful cleaner. That dad who was kicking him out, beating him up, trying to kill him, did not know the impenetrable plans of God for him. He did not even dream that one day he will be a nasher in the church, a hair usher in the church, and then a pastor in the same church. Hallelujah. Amen. God has plans for you as well. Amen. Uh -huh. Let the enemy play around, but don't focus too much on what the enemy is, is doing. I know it's hurting. Uh -huh. It's hurting. But fix your eyes on God because God has plans for you they will come to pass one by one by one. Amen. At seven years old, when you kick a child out, it's all dark. It's the end of the world for them. But that is not what God is seeing. God is seeing the pastor. Hallelujah. Amen. Couple years after, God is seeing an apostle who oversees 20 churches. Hallelujah. Let the wicked do what they have to do. Let the devil use them. But you focus on God. Because God has a plan for you. And that plan will come to pass. Regardless of what you're going through right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh -huh. All the forces of darkness could collude. Come with a great plan to crush him. But they did not know that in 2018, he will graduate from the University of Manitoba and being called a doctor. The same year, if it was not enough, he will be recognized and, and um, given the, the ambassadorship um, le level. Hallelujah. Same year. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The devil has their plans, all the demons and the whatever they call it against you. Let them do what they have to do because at the end of the day, they will fail. They are coming down. They have failed in the past. They're going to fall again this, this year. Amen. They're going nowhere. The plans of God for you will succeed. Just believe it. Amen. I'm single today. Tomorrow they will call me dad. Amen. 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 When you go to the bank machine, you enter your code, but you're not sure if even, even the machine will accept your code. Okay? But tomorrow, you will be writing checks to people. Amen. You will be writing checks. Hallelujah. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> amen, amen. Grace revolution is unstoppable. If you don't believe it, that's your problem. For me, it is unstoppable. The plans of God for me and for you are unstoppable. The enemy is trying left and trying right because he does not know the plans of God for me. 
The Bible says God has seen the end before your beginning. The Bible does not say the devil also has seen your end before you start. No, it's only God, hallelujah. Which means the devil can make noise. I do not care. God, only God knows my end. So we're going somewhere and the devil does not know. So don't be scared by what you're going through today. Don't be scared what, what, when you, 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 your kids are becoming crazy, you don't understand. They jump out of the window of the night when you're sleeping. Do not be scared about that. God has fantastic plans for, for, for them too. You just pray. Hallelujah. Pray. Pray. What you're going through is temporary. Only God has the final say. Only God. Isaiah chapter 14 verse 27 says, All the forces of darkness cannot destroy what God has ordained. Brothers and sisters, you can forget everything we're saying, but do ever forget this. You apply for a job, they do not pick you, they just give the job to another person who you believe is less qualified. Keep in mind that all the forces of darkness cannot destroy God's plan for you. Bless them, apply at a different place, hallelujah. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Few lessons I learned through all of this is one, God has a specific plan for me. My plan does not look like your plan. And your plan does not look like her plans. They are different. You may like what she's doing. You may like what God is bringing her. But God has something specific for you. For you. So my focus will not be her. My focus will be God. Hallelujah. Pray and ask God, what is the plan for me? Reveal, give me even a hint. Hallelujah. The second lesson for me is God is able. After 430 years, God said, enough is enough. I'm bringing you out into the promised land. 430 years. Hallelujah. God is able. Amen? Can someone believe that God is able? God is able. Hallelujah. In our life, we go through problems. You embrace this. You reject this. We do crazy things. But when you cry out to God, God responds to you. I remember the story of my, my grandfather. He told me the story. My, my, my family, my grandfather, were born in a tiny country called Rwanda very known for the genocide that happened there some 20 years ago. But my, my grandparents, the entire tribe, was persecuted for a long time. So they flee Rwanda long, long time ago. They went into a beautiful country called Congo, where I was born and I grew up. This country is huge, is rich, and the people have very good heart. They open the doors for anyone to come and live peacefully. Unfortunately, it is a country where after every 10 years there is a war. In 1967, there was a war in the, in the region where my grandfather was living. So everyone flee the city. My grandfather was stubborn. He, he, he stayed. He stayed. He said, this is my house. No one will come here to dictate me what I will do in my house. They told him, they are killing people. You should go. He said, no. I flee my home country, Rwanda. I'm not going to uh, do the same again here. So I'm staying. Eventually, soldiers came looking for people to help them transport their st stuff. So they saw my grandfather. They thought he was crazy, but he was not. They grabbed him. They said, okay, you come, and then you're going to help. 
Uh, okay. Where he was coming from, I think he was a rich man. He had people, a lot of people working for him. So he was not the one transporting anything. So he will talk to his people, you do that, you do that, that's it. But <laughs> where he was, he was a refugee, you understand? So when the soldiers said, okay, you grab these things and then we go, he said, they are, so he resisted. The soldier said to him, I will kill you. You take the things and then you follow me. So they put everything on him and then he tried to go. He was an old man. Uh, eventually, at some point, they, they were too heavy for him. So he fell. So the soldier had told him, if you don't do what I said to do, I'm going to kill you. Other people were killed left and right. So there was no one to stop him to do whatever he said he would do. When my grandfather uh, um, fell on the, on, the, on, on the ground, the soldier came with his um, um, gun and he wanted to kill him. Um, my, my, my grandfather said, okay, if God does not want you to kill me, you won't be able to kill me. This is a very stubborn person. So the result of that was the soldier became angry. He said, I can't believe this guy. He took his, his gun and he tried to kill him. At that time, my grandfather knew he was dead. So he prayed. He said, God, I know many people flee. There is no one in this city anymore. Are you still here? Did you run away like everyone else? That was the end of his prayer. Because he had like one or two seconds to pray. And the soldier was barreling with his gun. Nothing was coming out. And that time was enough for other soldiers to come and say, okay, what are you doing? Leave this man alone. I said, grandfather, stand up, go home. So he went home. <laughs> Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, regarding the situation you are in, the last word is God's word. Amen. The situation you are in, just ask God. Everyone else, hey, flee this country. No one is able to help me. Are you able? Are you still here? That is a prayer that comes from within. And God responds to such prayers regard, regarding of your situation. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And this reminds me the, the, the story of Jonah, the first book of Jonah. Jonah, God sent him to Nineveh, and he did not want to go there. He was the prophet of God. At that time, God was talking through people, and he sent you somewhere to do something specifically. But him, he did not want to go there. Instead of going where God sent him, he took the boat to going in the opposite side, just to make sure I'm really far from that place. There is no way I will go there. There are sinners, I'm not going to go there. Well, I'm not going to read the whole story. You know what happened. He refused to do what God wanted to do. And God provoked this storm. The ship where he was in, people knew they were going to die. They started removing things just to make it light. It was not enough. And Jonah was just sleeping. Hey. We are about to die. Who are you? People asked him. And then he said who he was. I'm a prophet. And whatever is happening right now is because of me. Hey, is that right? I said, yeah. If you want this to stop, 
just grab me, throw me outside, and you will see. Peace will come back. Ah, people said, okay, hmm. Your God who created everything, as you're saying, if we do this, what if we make a mistake? You know, doubt kicked in and fear as well. So these pagans started praying to the Lord, saying, okay, in case it's a mistake, please forgive us. But we, we need to leave. In the end, they grabbed the guy out. And automatically, there was no storm anymore. Everything was quiet. They were able to continue their um, route. And the poor guy was thinking now. In that situation, even though he disobeyed God, he prayed. Brothers and sisters, God listens. Doesn't matter what time you're praying. Doesn't matter the situation you are in. You may have been doing crazy things away from him. But at the time you say, oh God, I think I made a mistake. God is listening to you. There is no, it's never too late to come back to God. Hallelujah. He prayed and God listened to him. You know the story, God uh, asked a fish to come up and help him out. We always focus on that, oh, a fish came and then boom, okay. But we forget one thing very important. He prayed. He recognized his mistakes. I think it's in verse 6 he said, no, not verse 6. One of the verses, he said, I prayed and God came to my rescue. I prayed and then God sent a fish. So when he was about to die, he prayed. And that's the time God heard the prayer, heard the cries, and God sent a fish to help him out. Hallelujah. I'm asking you to consider praying. Consider praying. Even if you grew away from God, pray. Like my grandfather, the prayer ha- doesn't have to be two hours prayer. It's something that comes from your heart, recognizing the God, God's authority over your life, and then saying, help me out, and then God will come and help you out. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God heard his prayer. Amen. Amen. The, Psalm 103, verse 8 says, The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in compassion and loving kindness. This was what Jonah reminded. Jonah said, You are slow to anger. I disobeyed you. I was going the opposite uh, uh, place. Would you forgive me and help me? That was the end of his prayer. And then God came and helped him out. Hallelujah. How, how, have you heard a fish coming and help a person? Have you ever heard that? But God can command the, the, the water to slow down. He can stop the, the, the storm. And then he can order a fish to do something. Hallelujah. Amen. This is a situation where there is no ground. He got thrown out. I mean... It was done, but God is saying, this is just temporary. Do not worry. I control the situation. Uh You may be bleeding right now financially. God is saying, do not worry. I control the situation. You may say there is no bank around. I have no job around here. Uh Jonah was in the water. There was no ground, solid ground. There was nothing. But God ordered something to come and help him out. Hallelujah. God is merciful. Hallelujah. The the, the, the verse I was talking about is John 2nd, verse 1 to 2. What he says, Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from the belly of the fish, saying, I called the Lord 
out of my distress, and he answered me. Amen. I called. That means he called God before he got into the fish. Even though the prayer is in the fish, but he called before he got into the fish. Brothers and sisters, we have to understand where they, where they, where they are. Uh -huh. I, I may understand some people saying, okay, it's too late. You know, I, I got this disease. It's my fault. Pray. And the final word comes from him. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. When you cry, God listens. Amen. God has the final say. Hallelujah. Jonah's situation was impossible, but not impossible uh, with God. Hallelujah. The book of Mark, chapter 10, verse 27 says, When we cry to the Lord in our distress, he answers us and delivers us from impossible situations. Impossible situation, I went through it. I'm going to just talk about quickly here. I will give you just a small part of my situation. In the country I was born in, at some point, there, there was uh, this situation where people from my tribe were killed um, again. There was no reason for me to be um, killed. I was an engineer working for an oil company. No problem, nothing. Very young. That doesn't do politics and whatever. I was just a a new beginning uh, Christian. And then they grabbed me because of my tribe, a uh, prison, they started killing people and stuff. My wife, who is not from my tribe, managed to get me out of there. It was only tribe related. <laughs> it's just crazy, but th that's the way it is. So <laughs> I, I became free, but <laughs> it's like, this is a cell, you were free here, but there is a bigger cell, you still, you, you, you're not free yet. <laughs> so I could not leave the country, I could not even walk outside. Because when they see your morphology, they know what tribe you are from, and then you can get killed by anybody. That's the time we prayed. We prayed for eight months. Almost every night we were praying. I had some friends, pastors, who were hiding me because I could not be uh, seen outside. And then they were coming every night praying for two, three days without food. And then God had already said before everything that I will be free and I would travel. I had even a vision about where I was going to go. That is good, that is beautiful, but you have to leave your prison to be able to travel. And I could not. One day, uh, a sister we were praying for uh, said, okay, God is saying it's now. You have to go. I'm a person of faith. I had trained myself to go, which means some days I would wear my suit in my hiding place, and then I would look into the mirror and say, yes, you know, because a prisoner, you're a prisoner. You can be even naked, no one cares. Amen? But I trained myself to, to be the person I wanted to be. When the word came and say, it's today you have to go. Good. I was living downtown. From that place to where I had to take this boat and, and go to the nearby country, it was maybe 10 minutes away, maybe less. From my apartment to the place where you take the boat, uh, I was in great, great danger. At the beach, as they were calling it, it was full of soldiers and full of people who were identifying who is who. So there is no way you can go through, uh, outside of the country, through that place. Impossible. You will be identified by anybody and you will be killed. And, but that's the day God said, it's now. <laughs> okay. I checked two of my, my friends. They were pastors. They said, yes, we have the same conviction. It's now. Let's go. Good. I have tons of 
miracles that happened. It's just unbelievable. Well, you, when you live in an apartment building, you have to go down to take your car and stuff. And the prayer was simple. Close the eyes of my enemies. Close the eyes of everyone who has a wrong intention. It works. It works. I saw the, the, um, the guards. The building was guarded. I saw the guards looking away when I was coming. You have to understand that I could have been killed by anybody and my family as well for, fight, for hiding an enemy. I don't know why I was enemy for, but that was the situation. I went outside of the building, and I, I looked at the guy who knew me very well, and I saw the guy looking somewhere else. I said, you are the guard. You even don't check who comes in and comes out. What's going on? Fine. I took the vehicle, and then we went to, to the beach. That's how they call the place. And it was full of people. Here is the parking where you leave your vehicle and stuff. But there is another parking further down, closer to where the, the boats are, for VIP uh, people. Right? Because if you're a VIP, you're not going to walk from all that. You understand? So I was not a VIP. Actually, I was one, but I did not know. So we, they, they stopped the vehicle uh, really far, and they went to do all the paperwork. So I stayed in the vehicle. They came, they checked at me, they looked at me, uh, the kids and the soldiers and so many people. No one said anything. OK. I, I knew it would be the end of me. But inside of myself, I understand that that day was my day. Yeah. Absolutely. So they came back, and I don't know what happened. The soldiers started ushering us inside where the VIP parking was. I swear to God, I don't understand what happened. I saw with my own eyes soldiers coming to the window and salute me. Yes. So, I, I was not expecting that. I did not know what to do. I did not know if I have to salute like this. I had no clue. So I said, hi. <laughs> I said, hi. Inside of myself, I was dying. And then my hand, well, I had to do something. <laughs> I was just amazed. This is the person I was expecting them to kill me. And this person was actually, they were saying, VIP. VIP, Longwana Zela, VIP, VIP. So get out of there. So they're pushing people away for our vehicle to go to that place. This is not the end of the story. The, the, the boat was leaving. So I was not in. You understand? <laughs> I don't know who called who. I saw the thing coming back. Okay, one of the pastors had uh, a, a, a box of um, uh, handkerchiefs, uh, papers, uh, towels, and uh, inside we had money, right? Just in case they arrest me, <laughs> at least the money will be, someone will have the money, you understand? So when it was now about to go, he said, oh, you, you need some tissues? I said, yeah, thank you. I took the money, and the last person to let me go into the, the boat took my papers, looked at me, looked at the papers and looked at me. <laughs> I can guarantee you that the race, the prayer race, was like a 2,000 kilometers an hour. I mean, you speak in tongues that you even don't know. The pastors were doing the same too. Okay? If something happens to me, they will all be arrested. I mean, it's just a terrible situation. 
I looked at him, and then he gave me my uh, identification. And then he said, he gave order to remove the people who were in the VIP uh, um, place in the boat. Right? Because I was coming. Yes. The boat came. The boat stopped there. I got into the boat. And then the VIP room was empty. Wow. Only me. I mean, I do not get it. People may have decided something to do against you. But the final word comes from God and God alone. I am saying all of this because from that place to Canada, I have like tons of testimonies. <laughs> Amen? But just to tell you, you are going to get to a place where all the walls around you are closing on you. There is no way out. There is none. There is none. But unexpectedly, God will ordain this fish to come and swallow you. I guarantee you, it's a fish that God sent to swallow me and bring me to this other country. There is no way I can say that. I saw people I, I grew up with, people I truly love. I have more of my friends there. But the situation was the way it was. What could I say? I mean, I don't know if it's the devil who was doing stuff. Uh, I don't know. But what I know, I cried out to God, and God came to rescue me. I know that very well. I know that God has the final say. Before going there, I knew they would kill me. They killed other people there. They were arrested other people there. I knew that. But God had said something different. And then I stood firm on that thing. I tapped in. I, I hold in on, on, on the God's word. And then surely he brought me where he's supposed to bring me. Hallelujah. Ah, God has the final say. Amen. Yes, people had condemned us. Judges had signed off. These people must be killed. But it happened that I know an authority who is higher than them. Actually, I am related to that authority who is the supreme authority. We have the same DNA. So if a court has made a decision to kill you or to finish you, you are related to someone who is higher than them. Amen. All decisions they're taking over here, the this person that I know I'm related to will override their decision. Hallelujah. 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 That is what happened to me. God we serve is the supreme authority. Is above everything. Doesn't matter the situation you are living right now. He can override it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That is my point today. He, are, he has the final say. He can override everything that has been decided against you. Hallelujah. Amen. The, the book of Mark chapter 10 verse 27 say, When we cry to the Lord... In our distress, he answers us and delivers us from impossible situation. My situation was impossible. Same as Jonah. Same as my grandpa. Maybe you're going through a, a, a difficult situation. You do not see any way out. You think with what I have, there is no way I can make it. There is no way I can accomplish what I'm, 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 I'm trying to do. Well, well, well. Come talk to me. I will tell you my story, and I will tell you I was in the same situation. But God Almighty was on my side, and God is on your side too. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, impossible situation. God is saying, do not worry. Nothing is impossible to me. And actually, I have the final say. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So today I'm trying to revive your spirit.
to understand that the person is for you. His name is God. And no one can be against you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's stand up as we're finishing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just close your eyes if you can. Hallelujah. I want you to understand today that your destiny is unique. Unique. God has great plans for you. Hallelujah. God is the one who will bring you from where you are to the promised land. It doesn't matter how many years you have been into this slavery land. Hallelujah. God will bring you to a point where you will reach your full potential. So this is the time I'm asking you to open your mouth and declare a breakthrough into the situation you are in today. Praise the name of the Lord. Say, thank you, Lord, for who you are for me. Pray, hallelujah. You will stop everything that is against you. Hallelujah. That's the only way to take authority and, and block enemy's plans. Oh, hallelujah. I pray this morning and declare that the enemy is defeated. Hallelujah. Oh, the same way you heard the affliction of the people of Israel. Dear Lord, I'm praying that you hear the affliction of Cross Point Fellowship members right now. Hallelujah. Some don't have a job. Some would like to, to build a family that they can't. Oh, hallelujah. Situations are different. Would you hear the affliction this morning, Lord, and come to their rescue? Your words say, whoever prays, whoever prays to you, Lord, you will come to their rescue. Oh, hallelujah. Many of us are sick or have parents who are sick. Situations are desperate. Would you hear their affliction, hallelujah, this morning, Lord, and come to their rescue? If you are able to send a fish to swallow Jonah, you will be able to do everything else to save your children this morning, hallelujah. We give you praise, hallelujah. Amen, amen. Would you lead us in a song, hallelujah? If you are here and you feel that God has spoken to you and you need a prayer, just come. Come and agree with us for hallelujah. multiplication, hallelujah. Yes, amen, amen. He oh, knows my name. Oh, yes, he knows. Mm. He knows my name before. He sees each year that fall. He hears me when I call. He knows my name. Oh, yeah. 